Good morning. Today we're going to be um, in Jeremiah chapter 3 and 4. And so, Lord, just, we just pray that you would speak to us through your word, that you would um, give us a deeper revelation of who you are. I pray as we study it, that you would speak to our hearts, mind, and spirits. Lord, just that you would reveal to us um, your love for the nations, for us, um, and what you desire of us in these last days. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so chapter 3. If a man divorces a woman and she goes and marries someone else, he will not take her back again, for that would surely corrupt the land. Okay, this is a reference to Deuteronomy chapter 24, because there was a law that said a man couldn't just um, divorce his wife and keep taking her back. Divorce, take her back, divorce, take her back. Because one that was cruelty, and it gave, um, it made it easy for people to get divorced. They they didn't value marriage. Um, and so that's what he's, God is referring to here, that um, you can't take her back again because that would corrupt the land. Um, but Jesus, but God is saying, but my heart's not that. I made that rule so that divorce wouldn't be taken lightly. Um, but God's heart is like, I love you, repent. So as we continue, it's God's heart saying, you know, come back to me. But you have prostituted yourself with many lovers. So why are you trying to come back to me, says the Lord? Look at the shrines um, on every hilltop. Is there any place you have not been that has not been defiled or you have not defiled? And remember, anytime it's saying um, hilltop, it's all these sexual sins they did on the hilltops. Basically, there, there's, he's saying there hasn't been a place that you have not defiled by your adultery with other gods. You sit like a prostitute beside the road waiting for a customer. You sit alone like a nomad in the desert. You have polluted the land with your prostitution and your wickedness. That is why even the spring rains have failed. So God basically said there's no rain. You're in a drought because of your sin. For you are brazen, a brazen um, prostitute and you are completely shameless. So God was saying you're doing this and you don't even have any shame about it. You're, you're going about doing these things and you think there's nothing wrong. Because remember, this is the time of Josiah where there was a so-called revival in the land. They were going to temple. They were doing all the um, religious feasts and everything. Um, and yet they were continuing to um, bring in the practices of idolatry, idolatry, thinking they were they were doing nothing wrong. It says, yet you say to me, Father, you have been my guide since my youth. Surely you won't be angry forever. Surely you can you can forget about it. So that's what their heart was. They're like, oh, but God, we've been following you since we were you since I was young. I know your law. I know it. Um, surely you're not going to be angry forever. Surely you can just forget about it. Um, so you talk. So that, he's like, that you, that's what your talk is, but you keep on doing all of the evil you can. It says, during the reign of King Josiah, the Lord said to me, Je um, Jeremiah, have you seen what the fickle Israel has done? Like a wife who commits adultery, Israel has worshipped other gods on every hill and under every tree. Okay, remember the land of um, of of Israel that God had given had been divided into two. There was the northern tribes that was called Israel. There were ten tribes called Israel. And then southern tribes is where Jeremiah is, and the southern tribes were Judah and Benjamin. And so Jeremiah's telling, is God telling Jeremiah, tell the people, um, didn't you see what happened to Israel, the ten northern tribes? Like a wife who commits adultery, Israel has worshipped other gods on every hill and under every tree. I thought after she has done all this stuff, she will return to me. As God said, I thought after she had just done all these terrible things, she would return to me. But she did not return, and her faithless sister saw this. So God is saying, basically, didn't you see what happened to your sister, Israel? Because, you know, 90 years earlier, she was carried off to Assyria. So she had already been carried off to Assyria. It says, um, she saw that I divorced faithless Israel because of her adultery, but that treacherous sister Judah had no fear. And now she, too, has left me and given herself to prostitution. Israel treated it so, all so lightly. So that's really God is heart. It's like... You treat your sin so lightly. She says, she thought nothing of committing adultery by worshiping idols made of wood and stone. So now the land has been polluted. But despite all this, her faithless sister Judah has never sincerely returned to me. She has only pretended to be sorry. And I, the Lord, have spoken. So basically God is saying, didn't you see what happened to your sister Israel? She totally prostituted herself, herself with idols and she got carried away by um, Assyria. Couldn't you have learned for what happened to your sister Israel? And it says, but, but you don't. It says, despite all this, you never sincerely returned to me. You only pretended to be sorry. And that's one thing that we have to be careful of too, that we don't just, we're not, we don't sincerely repent. We only pretend to be sorry. Then the Lord said to me, even faithless Israel is less guilty than treacherous Judah. So why was one sister less 
guilty than the other. So he's saying, Israel, the ten tribes, they're less guilty than you. But that's because we should have because we should learn from the lesson of other people. If we see other people fail by doing a certain sin, we shouldn't just not learn our lesson. God, that's why the word is so important. Read the word, find out what God says, and then don't do the things. And so he's saying, they're less guilty because you saw what happened to them and you just walked right in the same steps they did. It says, therefore, go and give this message to Israel, the ten tribes. This is what the Lord says. O Israel, my faithless people, come home again to me, for I am merciful. I will not be angry with you forever. Only acknowledge your guilt, admit that you have rebelled against the Lord your God, and commit adultery. And you committed adultery against him by worshiping idols er under every green tree. Confess that you refuse to listen to my advice. I, the Lord, have spoken. So this is a message to us and to them. This is what God said. If you confess your sin, I am faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. Okay, so when, um, when we get saved, we have to confess and repent, be sincere. He said, acknowledge your guilt, admit that you rebelled against the Lord your God, um, and confess. Um, and that's what the Lord has spoken. Um, so it's a message to us too. Return home, you wayward children, says the Lord, for I am your master. Or another translation would be, I am married to you. So Jesus is saying, or God is saying, I consider Israel my bride. Return home, you wayward children, for I am your. I am married to you. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, from one town and two, from that family, from who, wherever you are scattered, and I will give you shepherds after my own heart, who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. Another translation for shepherds would be pastors. I'm going to give you pastors who are after my own heart, who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. And so one of the things Jeremiah, or John Corson said, is that um, we need pastors today that are going to feed people the word of God. They need to give the full counsel of God, not um, feel good messages that tickle the ear, but shepherds that will shepherd and guide us into the knowledge and understanding of the Lord. So we need to be fed the word of God. And when your land is once more filled with people, says the Lord, you will no longer wish for the good old days when you possess the ark of the, the Lord's covenant. You will not miss those days or even remember them, and there will be no need to rebuild the ark. In that day, Jerusalem will be known as the throne of the Lord. All nations will come here there to honor the Lord. They will no longer stubbornly follow their own evil desires. In those days, the people of Judah and Israel will return together from exile in the north. They will return to the land I gave their ancestors as, as an inheritance forever. Okay, so this is talking about um, when Jesus reigns on the earth during the millennium. Um, you're not, they're not going to need a t a, the Ark of the Covenant. Because remember in the first, when Solomon built the temple, it was a place to, um, to store the Ark, of the, t um, the Ark of the Covenant. And it was put in the Holy of Holies, and God's presence filled that Holy of Holies area where the Ark was. So the Ark represented God's presence. Um, it held the law. Well, after Jesus came, Jesus is... I don't know if you want to say our ark, but Jesus is our the presence of God. Um, he is the law. He is the word of God. So when Jesus is going to reign on during the millennial period, um, um, time, we don't need the ark of the covenant. And that's why he's saying you're not going to wish for the good old days when you had the ark of the covenant. You're gonna you're gonna not miss it because you're gonna have Jesus Himself in the midst of you. Um, and so that's what that is a reference to. I thought to myself, I would love to treat you as my own children. This is God's heart. I would love to treat you as my own children. I wanted nothing more than to give you this beautiful land, the finest possession um, in the world. And then this is really a, heart, um, a neat um, next scripture. I look forward to calling you for, I looked forward to your calling me father. And I wanted you never to turn from me. So that's God saying, I look so forward to you calling me father. And I wanted you never to turn from me. Um, and that's Jesus when he, we, in the New Testament. Jesus, because the, the Jews never thought they could call God Father. They just never saw him in that manner. But when Jesus came in the New Testament, he said, believers and people who, you know, call him Abba Father, call him Daddy. And Jesus said, you know, when you see me, you see the Father. And Jesus' heart and God's heart is to, for us to have that personal relationship with him that is so close that we actually call him Dad. We call him Daddy. Um, and so that's God's, even in the Old Testament, God's saying, that's what I look forward to. I looked forward to a day that you would call me Father. But you have been unfaithful to me, You're, you people of Israel. You have been like a faithless wife who leaves her husband. I, the Lord, have spoken. Voices are heard high on the mount, um, windswept mountains and weeping and pleading of um, Israel's people. 
for they have chosen crooked paths and have forgotten the Lord their God. My wayward children, says the Lord, come back to me, and I will heal your way, your wayward hearts. So God is a, God, um, a father, and he wants his children to come back to him, and he wants to heal their wayward hearts. Yes, we're coming, the people reply, for you are the Lord our God. And that's basically a reference to the um, end of the tribulation because Jesus said, I will not return until you call blessed, until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So Jesus told Israel, I'm not going to come back until you acknowledge me and say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So that's a reference there. Yes, we're coming, the people reply, for you are the Lord our God. Our worship of idols on the hills and our religious orgies on the mountains are a delusion. Only in the Lord, only in the Lord our God will Israel ever find salvation. From childhood we have watched and everything our ancestors worked for, their flocks and their herds, their sons and their daughters, was squandered on a delusion. Let us now lie down in shame and cover ourselves with dishonor, for we and our ancestors have sinned against the Lord our God. From our childhood to this day, we have never obeyed him. So one day that they are going to acknowledge um, that Jesus is Lord, and they're going to realize the sin, it was all a delusion. It was a lie by the enemy, and they fell for it. Um, but when we backslide and we turn our, um, away from the Lord, our backsliding leads to confusion. We get we don't know anymore what is truth because we're not reading truth. Um, so we have to be careful that we always are in the word and we're knowing what truth is so that we don't get misled by the enemy and backslide. Oh, Israel, says the Lord, if you wanted to return to me, you could. That's God's heart. Return. It's like the prodigal son. You wanted to return to me, you could. You could throw away your detestable idols and stay away no more. Then when you swear by my name, saying, as surely as the Lord lives, you could do so with truth, justice, and righteousness. Because they had a saying, you know, like we, we say, God bless you. God bless you. Um, it's just a little saying that we say. Well, they had a saying that would be, as surely as the Lord lives. You know, that would be their greeting. As surely as the Lord lives. But he's saying, you're not, you weren't, you're not saying it in sincerity. But he said, but if you would return to me and he would swear by my name, then when you say, as surely as the Lord lives, you could do so in truth, justice, and righteousness. Then you would be a blessing to the nations of the world, and all my people would come and praise my name. So that's a message to us. When we, when we come back to the Lord, when we repent, when we love him wholeheartedly, then we're a blessing to the nations of the world, and all people would come and praise his, his name. This is what the Lord says to the people of Judah and Jerusalem. Plow up the hard ground of your hearts. Do not waste your good seed among the thorns. O people of Judah and Jerusalem, surrender your pride and power. Change your hearts before the Lord, or my anger will burn like an unquenchable fire because of all your sins. And so that's kind of like God saying to us too. Plow up the hard ground in your hearts. Change your hearts before the Lord. And then it says, shout to Judah and broadcast to Jerusalem. Tell them to sound the alarm throughout the land. Run for your lives. Flee to the fortified cities. Raise a signal flag over the warning for Jerusalem. So this is God saying, okay, um, Bab the Babylonians are coming. Warn the people. Flee now. Do not delay, for I'm bringing a terrible destruction upon you from the north. Remember, the Babylonians came from the north. A lion stalks from its den. Now, the lion was a symbol of the Babylonians. So, a lion stalks from its den and a destroyer of nations. It has left its lair and is headed your way. It's going to devastate your land. Your towns all lie in ruins with no one living in them anymore. So put on clothes of mourning and weep with broken hearts, for the fierce anger of the Lord is still upon us. In that day, says the Lord, the king and the officials will, um, will tremble in fear. The priests will be struck with horror, and the prophets will be appalled. Then I said, O, Lord, o sovereign Lord, the people have been deceived by what you said, for you promised peace for Jerusalem, but the sword has held their, um, held their throats. Now what Jeremiah is saying here, he's saying, okay, so God's saying, okay, warn the people, this destruction is coming from the north. But Jeremiah said, but God... All of the, you've got prophets all over the land who are receiving your people because the, these prophets are saying, um, peace, peace, um, peace for Jerusalem. He said, but when they're saying this, he said, there's a sword being held at their throats um, of Israel and, and Judah. And so um, Je Jeremiah was a little bit confused. Why are these prophets supposedly prophesying your name saying this? But they were false prophets. And that's some, a warning kind of for today too. If there's a lot of people who are claiming, you know, who are, who, who are Christians um, or claiming to be Christians, and they're giving these false um, um, prophecies. Oh, everything's going to be great. This is going to be your, your year of prosperity. This is going to be of your year of, of, you know, blessings and, um, you know. And when I hear people like that, I don't, I don't trust them because to me it goes against the word. I mean, as I see things unfolding in prophecy, things are going to get worse 
not better. Now, that doesn't mean our personal lives are not being blessed, spiritually blessed by the Lord. We draw close to him. We have spiritual blessings of healing. and that. Kind of, but when, when people are prophesying, oh, you're going to get riches and you're going to get, you know, um, everything's going to be awesome this year. I don't, I don't believe those prophets. Um, so I'm going to try to go over 15 minutes if I can and record it. We'll see. The time is coming. Um, when the Lord will say to the people of Jerusalem, my, peop my dear people, a burning wind is blowing in from the desert, and it's not a gentle breeze useful for um, winnowing grain. It's a roaring um, blast sent by me. Now I will pronounce your destruction. So the destruction of Babylon came in like a fierce wind. Your enemy rushes down on us like storm clouds. His chariots are like whirlwinds. His horses are swifter than eagles. How terrible it will be, for we are doomed. So that was what they were saying. Oh my God, here comes the Babylonians. O oh, Jerusalem, cleanse your heart that you may be saved. How long will you harbor your evil thoughts? Your destruction has been announced from Dan and the hill country of Ephraim. Warn the surrounding nations and announce us to Jerusalem. The enemy is coming from a distant land, raising a battle cry against the towns of Judah. They surround Jerusalem like a watchman around the field, for my people have rebelled against me, says the Lord. Your own actions have brought this upon you. This punishment is bitter, piercing you to the heart. So basically, God warned them, come back, come back, come back. You're a bride. Come back. I love you. Um, come back from your adultery. I will heal you. And yet they refused. And so that's why God said, this terrible destruction that's coming from the north, your own actions have brought this upon you. And it's so, this punishment that you created yourself is going to pierce, to you, pierce you to your very heart. And then it says, my heart, my heart, I rhythm pain. My heart pounds within me. I cannot be still. This is Jeremiah just sad, you know, sad. Oh, what I've seen, what's coming. My heart, my heart, I rhythm pain. I, my heart pounds within me. I cannot be still. For I've heard the blast of the enemy trumpets and the roar of the rattle cries. Waves of destruction are over the land until it lies in complete desolation. Suddenly my tents are destroyed. In a moment my shelters are crushed. How long must I see the battle flags and hear the trumpets of war? And that's kind of uh, my heart. And I know your guys' heart too. When you see like in America and what's happening in Israel, it's like, oh Lord, how long until you come back? How bad is it going to get? I mean... Um, it's scary to see what's happening. We know the Lord's in control, but like, Lord, how bad is it going to get until you come back? Um, and then the Lord says, my people are foolish and do not know me, he says. They are stupid children who have no understanding. They are, they are clever enough to do what's wrong, but they, they have no idea how to do what's right. Um, I looked at the earth and it was empty and formless. And that's kind of a reference back to um, Genesis for the, for the world was empty and formless. I looked at the heavens and there was no light. I looked at the mountains and hills and they trembled and shook. I looked at all the people who were gone and the birds in the sky had flown away. I looked at the fertile ground that became a wilderness. The towns lay in ruins, crushed by the Lord's fierce anger. So Babylon completely destroyed Judah and it lay in ruins. This is what the Lord says. The whole land will be ruined, but I will not destroy it completely. The earth will mourn and the heavens will be draped in black. Because of my decree against my people, I have made up my mind and it will not change it. So God's judgment was coming because they refused to listen. And so for 70 years, um, they were left in, um, they were taken away to captivity. And um, Judah and Israel lay in ruins. At the noise of the chariots and the archers, the people flee in terror. They hide in bushes and run for the mountains. All the towns have been abandoned, not a person remains. What are you doing? You who have been plundered. Why do you dress up in beautiful clothing and put on gold jewelry? Why do you brighten your eyes with mascara? Your primping will do you no good. The allies who were your lovers despise you and will seek you and kill you. So even though Jeremiah was warning the people, they kept like dressing up, nothing's going to happen. They were believing these false prophets that, you know, things were going to be great. They're getting all dressed up, partying on. Um, and then he's like, why are you doing that? The, the, these allies, you know, Egypt, who you thought was your ally, they despise you and they're going to seek to kill you. I hear a cry like that of a woman in labor, the groans of a woman giving birth to her first child. It is beautiful Jerusalem, gasping for breath and crying out, help, we are being murdered. Um, Run up and down every street in Jerusalem, says the Lord. Look high and low and search throughout the city. If you can find even one just and honest person, I will not destroy the city. That's what he's telling Jeremiah. Run up and down every street, um, Jeremiah. Look. See high and low, search for, for the, search throughout the city. See if you can just find one just person, one honest person, and I will not destroy the city. And what was that a reference to? Abraham too. Um, Abraham said, Lord, if there's you know 10 just people, will you not destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? And God said, I won't destroy it. So he's telling Jeremiah, see if you can find just one, just one, one, one person, and I'll not destroy the city. But even when they are under oath saying, saying surely as the Lord lives, 
they're still telling lies. And so not one just person that would, um, could, could be found that would tell the truth. And that's what it says. They kept saying, oh, surely as the Lord lives. He said, but they're just still all telling lies. And John Corson was saying, and when he was teaching this, he said um, that everybody um, at the time, um, oh, in 2016, the word of the uh, word of the Lord or word of the in Webster's dictionary was um, post truth. He said, you know, every year the um, they they come up with a new word for the year, and so the word for the year was post truth, meaning that we know we are uh, post truth generation. We no longer want truth. And that's kind of what's happening now, is nobody wants sound doctrine anymore. Everybody wants messages that tickle the ears, and nobody wants sound doctrine, which is the full counsel of God, because the full counsel of God warns, warns to change our ways, to rend our hearts, to change our hearts, to come back to Him, and people don't want to hear it. They just want messages that tickle the ears. And so that's why it's kind of sad that not even one person was found that was truthful. And so we prayed, um, we'll end it there. Lord Jesus, we just pray that you would be with us, that you would change our hearts, Lord Jesus, that you would um, forgive our nation. We pray that we would come back to you, that we would um, seek and be people of truth. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would speak your truth as a warning to people and a warning to ourselves, Lord Jesus, but that we would not um, water it down that we would speak truth in love, Lord Jesus, that we would your, be your messengers. And Lord Jesus, we just pray for our family and our friends that they would come to know you um, before it's um, too late, Lord Jesus, that they would have changed hearts. I pray that you would give our children a love for your word, that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit, but that they would um, wake up I and mean, go to sleep longing for you and longing to read your word and being people of faith. Lord Jesus, we ask for healing um, for Noah, continued healing over him, Lord Jesus, that we pray that um, his body is a cancer the free zone that it's being strengthened and that's being um his good cells are regenerating his blood levels are all normal and that he's going to come out of this stronger than um, he was before and healthier than he was before i pray that you are just continuing to um, make him a cancer-free zone we pray for my friend lord Jesus, that her cancer in her um, arm lord Jesus, would be completely gone in jesus name that you're plucking it from the root and throwing it into the depths of the sea that she will be a cancer-free zone um, Lord Jesus, we pray healing from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. We pray continued healing for my dad, that you're restoring his hunger, his spiritual and physical hunger. We pray for my mom, Lord Jesus, that she would get rest. I pray for the two of them that they would just get divine sleep, Lord Jesus, and your shalom peace. We pray, Lord Jesus, for um, Scarlett, just continued healing for her, that all seizures and symptoms of the seizures would be gone in Jesus' name. We pray for... Um, Everyone's family, Lord Jesus, I know that there's people here that are listening and that they have um, people in their family or themselves that need healing. Lord Jesus, you know who they are. So right now, Lord Jesus, we just put their name um, in and we think about them and we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would heal them of any illness, sickness, um, anything that they've got going on in their lives where they need a miracle. We pray for your miracle touch. We ask this in Jesus' name. All right. Love you guys. Bye.